to the interior view of the skull. Um, I will be moving to this again. Oops. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me get it straight. I have. Okay. We will go through the same routine. First, let's see which bones are there. Then we'll see which sutures are there. Then we will focus on the uh, individual. Okay, that's nice. Okay, let's see what bones are visible here. First, uh, I'm just uh, naming the bones. You can see here the frontal bone. The frontal bone that is making most of your forehead. This is the frontal bone. This is making most of your forehead. By the way, I'm using 3D4 medical uh, anatomy model if you want to check it out and look online. So this is the frontal bone. This is making part of the forehead, upper part of the orbital and here it is marking root of the nose and it is making a lot of things. Then this is the bone that we can see here, the zygom uh, the maxillary bone. There are two bones, maxillary bone, one on the right side, the other one will be on the left side. Then there is a cheek bone. The one you see here, this is the zygomatic bone. Then you see these bones. These are called nasal bones. These are nasal bones, right and left nasal bones. So these are the four major bones that you see on the surface. The frontal bone, uh, the the frontal bone, the maxillary bone, the zygomatic bone, the nasal bone. You are then you will see the apertures here. There are two apertures that are visible here. One will be this one. One will be this one. This is orbit. This is orbit. One will be this one. This is the nasal aperture. So we will look at these also. So uh, let's see the sutures where the bones will. I will go into the bones in the orbit uh, when I go into that topic. Frontal bone. Which bones is frontal bone joining? If we stare at the norma verticalis, a norma frontalis, you will see that there is a hint of uh, the metopic suture that is present here, where the two bones meet. It may, it usually, it's not visible here. Here, there is the joining between frontal and nasal bones. That is, will be frontal nasal suture at this point. Here, the nasal and maxillary bones are meeting at this point between these two points. So there will be frontal maxillary suture. Here, at this point, frontal and zygomatic bones will be meeting. That will be frontozygomatic suture. And here, the zygomatic and maxillary bones are meeting. So that will be maxillary zygomatic suture. And again, there is a suture between the two bones here, maxillary bones here. You can see all of these structures here. Frontal bone shown in the blue here, zygomatic bone in the orange. There is the maxillary bone and here are the nasal bones. Let's talk about the features uh, that are present on the frontal bone. Frontal bone, there is a flat surface, uh, the frontal bone. Here it is making the upper margin of the superior orbit. And here you can see there is a dip and sometimes there is a foramina. Sometimes there is a foramina, sometimes there is a notch at this point. If you can see my mouse cursor at this point, let's zoom on here. So here it is shown as the foramen. This is known as supraorbital foramen. Or if there is a notch here, that will be known as supraorbital notch. And it is making the upper uh, margin of the orbit. Then, <clears throat> okay. Then if you see, it is very subtle in here. This is the raised portion here. This portion and this line, you can see the raised portion. So these are known as supercellary arches. These are known as supercellary arches, supraorbital margin. These are the supercellary uh, arches. And on this, you will see 
just give me a second okay just give me one second just stay here Okay, I'm back. Uh, so where were we? We were talking about the frontal bone. We just talked about the uh, the part that is making the forehead, the part that is making the supraorbital margin, that contains the supraorbital notch or supraorbital foramen. It depends from skull to skull. Uh, there is human variation, and on the top of it, here there is superciliary arches, and on the superciliary arches, you may be able to see a uh, nasal of uh, prominence frontal tuber frontal prominence this area here at this area you may be able to see a little on the shade here this area i am focusing the mouse here so the, here this part superciliary arch you may be able to palpate on yourself also on the medial aspect middle half the superciliary arch and it is little raised it is known as frontal eminence okay the superciliary arches if we join them by imaginary line if we join them by imaginary line let's say here uh, let me get the pen so this point where the two superciliary arches uh, roughly meet so here roughly so here where the two superciliary arches meet that is known as glabella okay this is known as glabella and uh, then the point where the two sutures meet here the point where the frontal suture uh, the frontal bones and the two nasal bones meet that this particular point this point this is known as nasion this is known as nasion so this is what the frontal bones uh, let's get to the orbit Achha, orbit jo hai, isko hum dekhte hai, orbit how is orbit been formed orbit we will look at the margins that are structures that are forming the margins of the orbit this will be the superior margin, supraorbital margin. This will be the lateral, in, lateral margin, inferior margin, infraorbital margin, and medial margin. And you can see it is like a pyramid that has fallen on its side. So this point is the apex of the pyramid. And here will be the defining points of the walls. So we will look at the floor, the lateral wall, the superior wall, and the medial wall. So how this orbit is formed so let's jump into it uh, you can uh, put the answers in the live comments uh, here so so which structures are forming the superior margin of the orbit so here is the superior margin of the orbit it is being formed by which bone you can use the abbreviations here it is being formed by this frontal bone only so this frontal bone is making the superior margin okay what structures is forming the medial margin of the orbit here this and this one okay here you most a lot of people in my i am tempted to write about this one this is the lacrimal bone but just to keep in mind the orbit margin it passes in front of the uh, lacrimal bone so lacrimal bone does not yes thank you Abdullah lacrimal bone does not come into the margin of the orbit so which two bones are making the medial margin of the orbit here it is the frontal bone above and maxillary bone below okay which structures are forming the lateral wall there will be two bones above it will be zygomatic bone or uh, the frontal bone and below it will be the zygomatic bone and of course there will be frontozygomatic suture between them and which structures are forming the inferior margin inferior margin will include laterally the zygomatic bone and medially the maxillary bone so these are the margins of the orbit okay so let's get inside the orbit a little 
let's try to find which structures are forming which walls of the orbit let's look at the roof wonderful yes let's look at the roof the structure that is forming the roof of the orbit that is totally wholly the frontal bone we are not going into the detail of the individual bones but that will be the front occipital the orbital part orbital plate of the frontal bone the part of the frontal bone that is lying in the roof of the orbit it, that is also forming the floor of the anterior cranial fossa that is the roof of the orbit okay let's look at the inferior wall inferior wall who is making the inferior wall yes let's look at here the inferior wall inferior wall is majorly being made by the maxillary bone here but there is some contribution from the zygomatic bone on the lateral aspect also in the inferior wall in the inferior wall there are interesting things to be seen here here this particular groove is seen that converts into a foramen right here what are these structures because they are in the inferior of the orbit these are called infra orbital here it is called groove here it is called foramen so these are in the inferior aspect these are infra orbital groove infra orbital foramen they run in the inferior aspect of the base of the orbit and they open into the front of the face in front of your cheek right here so that is the infra orbital foramen and here between them there is an infra orbital canal and the contents will be also known as infra orbital artery infra orbital vein infra orbital nerve we will go into the detail later so these are the structures that are forming the roof uh, floor okay let's get to the lateral wall it is simpler it is made up of two bones here in the front you can see the zygomatic bone in the back you can see the sphenoid bone this particular portion is the greater wing of sphenoid this particular portion is the greater wing of sphenoid then comes the medial wall medial wall it started from here from the zygomatic bone but zygomatic bone usually remain to the anterior margin so medial wall will start from here lacrimal bone here the lacrimal apparatus the lacrimal sac is present then there is the ethmoid bone while reading the book you will read a word uh, lamina cribrosa lamina cribrosa means it's pip sorry sorry for that um sorry for making a wrong statement lamina papyracea ko spelling ke kuch shayad mere ko mistake ho gaya yani paper thin lamina lamina papyracea to ye aapko abhi agar aap gaur kare to is jagah ke upar aapko you may aapko ethmoid sinuses nazar aa rahe honge through the bone because it's such a light bone that you may be able to see the sinuses through it from the inferior aspect then comes this bone this is again sphenoid bone but you can see it is different from there is a gap between the part that we saw in the lateral wall so that is known as the body of the sphenoid bone okay so these are the structures that are forming the walls the roof by frontal bone the medial wall by lacrimal ethmoidal and body of sphenoid bone and the floor by maxillary and zygomatic bone here i skipped a bone that has a very small contribution that is this bone this is if you are up to it remember that it is a part of the floor it is a part of the palatine bone it is a part of the palatine bone is the orbital part of the palatine bone and then there comes this the zygomatic bone and the Uh, zygomatic bone and the greater wing of sphenoid so we are done with the margins of the orbit and the walls of the orbit let us look at the openings 
which are present which is connecting orbit to the other structures first zoom out simply orbital margin is the, the largest of the openings that are present in the orbit jo samne wala bada sara surakh hai jiske humne char margins dekhe the so this is the largest of the opening then there is this supraorbital margin supraorbital groove ye supraorbital foramen in the medial aspect if you look let's look at the medial aspect if you look at the medial aspect you will be able to look at this lacrimal foramen here this anterior ethmoidal foramen posterior ethmoidal foramen orbital canal so these are the structures that will be found in the uh medial wall this will be anti posterior ethmoidal anterior ethmoidal lacrimal and uh, optic canal so these are the structures that will be found in the medial wall you can see the lacrimal opening a little better here if you see like this and okay if we look at the back just near the orbital margin you will see this opening so this opening is called supra orbital groove supra orbital fissure supra orbital fissure so this is the supra orbital fissure it is present between which bones it is present between the body of the sphenoid bone medially it is present between the body of the sphenoid medially and the greater wing of sphenoid laterally and if we trace it laterally here it is present between the lesser wing of sphenoid and greater wing of sphenoid if you remember from the neuroanatomy it is connecting the middle cranial cavity to the orbital cavity okay then look at the floor we saw one structure before we will see two openings one opening we saw already so this is the opening for the infraorbital uh, groove infraorbital groove and infraorbital uh, tunnel and here this fissure this is infraorbital fissure this is infraorbital fissure infraorbital fissure and it is present between which bones it is if you guess it you can see from the here it is present between the which bone is this it is present between the uh, greater wing of sphenoid and the maxillary bone and which structure does it which cavity does it lead to it is a little ahead of time but i will tell you regardless it leads to here two cavities here if you look here it will lead to pterygopalatine fossa and here it will lead to infra temporal fossa laterally it leads to infra temporal medially it leads to pterygopalatine fossa fissure fossa okay which other openings are there there is a, a, a two openings on the lateral aspect here you may be able to see right now let me get the image i want to get here you may see these two openings these two these both are present in the zygomatic bone so these are known as zygomatic uh, openings and the one that is opening in the zygomatic bone to the anterior facial aspect of the face that is known as zygomatic facial canal and the one that is opening to the temporal aspect that is known as zygomatic temporal so you see here is the zygomatic facial it opens right here on the front of the face zygomatic facial and this is that below one this is the zygomatic temporal one and it opens all the way back somewhere here you may be able to see it right there so this is the zygomatic temporal so this is the zygomatic temporal so this is all about the orbit let me get back to the presentation okay i'm going to take a, a 
half a minute breather just look at the slide and check if anything is remaining if any have question up till now ask me a question and i will move on from this after a minute from this point onwards Okay then, uh, by now you must have done the forehead, the orbit, the different bones in the forming the orbit, the different foramina that are forming the orbit. I have not discussed the structures that are passing through the foramina. We will leave it for the day when we will discuss the orbit and its contents. And uh, let's move on to this bone, nasal bone. Let's see which connections which uh, it's making. On the superior aspect, nasal bone is joining with the this bone, facial bone, or frontal bone, frontal nasal suture. At this particular point, where the uh, at the medial aspect, because the bones are placed like this, slanting, so the and this the medial aspect is also anterior aspect. So you will also you will read both the text in the book. You will this margin will be called medial margin as well as anterior margin. And this margin will be called lateral margin as well as the posterior margin because this is how the bone is placed. The tip of my fingers will be the medial and if you see from the side it will be anterior also. So this is the nasal bone. Uh, here it is making the suture with the frontal bone. In the midline it is making suture with each other internasal suture. It is a plain suture and here on the lateral aspect it is making a suture with the maxillary bone. On the inferior aspect it may look like a free margin and you will see this like this on a dry skull but in a live person here there is a cartilage lateral cartilages uh, of the uh, the lateral cartilages of the nose the lateral uh, uh, cartilage okay now let's see the nasal opening this is the nasal opening which structures are forming the this nasal openings so on the lateral aspect it is bound by the maxillary bone on the superior aspect it is formed by the two joining nasal bones on the inferior aspect it is again formed by the two joining maxillary bone but the point that is in the midline uh, where the two maxillary bones meet that is called anterior nasal spine posterior nasal spine will be seen in the norma bizalis when we will look at it inside the which bones are visible from this point of view here you see the nasal septum nasal septum here comprises of two bones the one in shown in blue upwards that is the ethmoid bone perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone the one that is shown here below that is the vomer bone vomer is an independent bone ethmoid uh, is the same one that we saw here it is a very complex bone we will dissect it more when we go to the nasal aspect then there is a shelves in the nose that is not the part of this uh, lecture right now but we will give you an, a little peek there are three shelves the superior the middle the inferior the superior and middle are not separate bones they are in fact the out projections of the ethmoid bones also so here you are able to see the middle nasal conca and middle nasal conca is let me do one thing middle nasal conca and in superior nasal conca are part of the ethmoid bone and here this is the inferior nasal conca inferior nasal conca are independent bones inferior nasal conca are independent so this is about the nasal apertures and uh, you will see here if we if we want to look at the 3d model here you can see all of these structures here here is the nasal bones and here are the three connections with the frontal bone superiorly Enter medially with them the other nasal bone and laterally posteriorly with the maxillary bones and here is the nasal aperture nasal aperture is bound by nasal bones superiorly 
and on the sides it is made up of the maxillary bones and here there is a maxillary spine okay and what the part of the nose that is visible from this aspect you see the septum the upper part that is a perpendicular plate all of the green part is the ethmoid bone so you can see the two shelves the middle line that is the nasal septum this is the middle concha visible here superior concha is very difficult to see but if you are too eager to see this one where the mouse is right now between the septum and this this is the middle nasal the superior nasal concha but i won't uh, force on this right now this is the lateral nasal concha we will see rest of the bones of the nose when we go to the nasal cavity so this is about the nasal cavity let's move to the maxillary bone itself so maxillary bone it is shown in the green here when you are asked about it you can talk about its connection it is joining the frontal bone above lacrimal bone here nasal bone here the other maxillary bone here and the zygomatic bone here it is making part of the teeth it is making later wall of the nose it is making the hard palate it is making the floor of the orbit so the structures the processes that there is the maxillary uh, there is the frontal process of the maxilla there is the that joins with the frontal bones that is the zygomatic process of the maxilla that joins the maxillary bone that is the alveolar process the jaw that we have teeth attached to it that is called the um alveolar process and uh, that's it and the thing that is important here the landmarks that we come into your osby that is infraorbital opening infraorbital foramen anterior nasal spine and it may be visible here you may be able to appreciate here the part above the teeth there is a little concavity in the bone that concavities are named according to the teeth above the incisors there will be incisive fossa above the canines there will be um, canine fossa the, so these are incisive fossa they are present between them so here are the fossa are a little more uh, visible here you may see on the groove like there you may see the fossa between them here the alveolar part so this is all about the frontal bone zygomatic bone uh, if you see at the zygomatic bone zygomatic bone is a very irregular bone and this is the bone that is forming this prominence of your cheek and the zygomatic bone have a lot of irregular bone it has a lot of processes it has this process the frontal it part take part in orbital and it goes back on the lateral aspect you will see right here this will be the temporal process and here the of course maxillary part maxillary process of the main part of the zygomatic bone on the zygomatic bone these are the processes are important and the foramen are important that we saw previously with the orbit the zygomatic facial opening here and on the posterior aspect there oh sorry uh, here ek minute uh, the zygomatic facial opening right here and on the back there right there that is a zygomatic temporal uh, opening so these are parts of the zygomatic bone uh, that is the opening that are features of the zygomatic bone the prominence the part that is joining the frontal bone the part that is joining the maxillary bone and the part that is making this zygomatic arch so this is the zygomatic bone so we have talked about all of these structured into maxillary suture foramen maxillary arch maxillary sinus i have not talked about maxillary sinus maxillary sinus is basically paranasal sinus we will go into the detail in the uh, again paranasal sinus and nasal septum it, the skull has a large number of air filled cavities inside it there is an air filled cavity right here frontal air sinuses they may or may not communicate with one another there is ethmoidal sinuses we have a brief overview or brief mention of them here there is sphenoid sinuses not seen in this particular view and here in this view there is maxillary sinus there is a large cavity 
uh, inside the zygomatic bone it's like a hollow cavity bone and this cavity will have be related to the orbit in the superior aspect it will be related to the nose on the metal lateral aspect on the medial aspect it will be related to the teeth on the uh, base and in the apex will be going to the temporal bone or zygomatic arch it uh, becomes important for a few things one this is the one that is most uh, largely affected in the those of you you may have experienced sinusitis this becomes this is air filled but in case of sinusitis it may become filled with fluid so you may feel pain here you may feel heaviness here another important thing is it becomes larger and larger in size as we grow old as we age so it the bones become thicker and the sinuses become larger it becomes so large in the older age that the roots of the teeth may not be covered by bone may be covered only by a mucous membrane while in the older people so if you are especially a dentist and uh, uh, in a medical profession you must know that dental infection may spread to the maxillary sinus and may spread to the other regions from there onwards also so this is about the maxillary uh, bone maxilla and maxillary sinus so we have talked about uh, the nasal aperture so let's make it uh, we have the frontal bones which are arches frontal ear sinuses we've talked about maxilla sutures intermaxillary suture right here it is not very visible in adults because it is fused infraorbital margin maxillary arch maxillary sinus we have talked about zygomatic bone the structures that it is forming that is the part of the orbit the cheek and articulation the bone it is forming the foramina that is present we have talked about it the vomer bone then in the nasal septum the nasal bones that are forming the nasal especially the nasal aperture the occipital margins and the conca the shelves uh, that we talked about the middle conca and the inferior conca so this is all about the anterior view i am right here not going anywhere if you have any questions regarding the anterior view I will stop for a minute to wait for your any queries. If there will be none, I will move on to the little view. So I am here uh, giving any opportunity to ask any question regarding this right now. So what is maxillary arch? We have talked about maxillary arch. This, uh, the part where the teeth are attached. This part is maxillary arch. Like uh, this thing is maxillary arch. So this part, the upper jaw, you see, this is the maxillary arch the point where it gives rise to the roots of the teeth okay if you still have any questions do mention in the comments i'll come back to them later inshallah let's move on to the yes uh, you mentioned uh, the date of closure of posterior fontanelle uh, dr abdullah says this in the embryology we say that it closes in two to three months of age and it closes at one year of age there is a variation in the textbooks and this is a wide range so 
its average time is usually this uh, or it is basically the range the two to three months is usually the early part and it closes by one year of age so ye hum is tarah bolte hote hain baki main uh, i have opened the bd chorasia also let me confirm which figures they have given i know for the fact that both of these figures are given as such in both of the books because actually there is a lot of space there is a lot of potential between those two you may go for 2 to 3 months because most of the osteology um it is uh, most of your examiners will ask the osteology questions from the bd chorasia and uh, go for 2 to 3 months snell has written one year but it is the it is close you may understand it by it is closed latest by one year so it is like that so uh, two to three months is a fairly fine answer you may um, go ahead for that and usually a good teacher usually knows about this variation and it he or she will give you a leverage inshallah Uh, regarding this aspect let's move on uh, okay okay then uh, i hope so i have answered your queries to some of the satisfaction at least so this is about the frontal bone i did not use this particular picture uh, during my uh, session i used the 3d model i am leaving it for the recording you may pause the recording here and look at the it is also taken from the netter's atlas okay let's go to the later